In this video, I'm going to show you how to compute probabilities using the one-way frequency and the table analysis tasks in SAS Studio. So you see on my screen right now, I have six probability questions using a variety of different probability rules. So in the video, we'll cover relative frequency probability, the addition rule, the multiplication rule, the general addition rule, and conditional probability. So let's start with number one. What is the probability that a car is front wheel drive? As you can tell, we're using your favorite data set, sashelp.cars, to do this activity. So because we're only analyzing one variable in this particular question, we're going to use the one-way frequencies task. So we want to know what the relative frequency of having a front wheel drive car is. So let's go ahead to tasks and statistics and use the one-way frequencies task. I'll expand my workspace, and you'll notice we already have the sashelp.cars data set selected. So I'll just add the drive train variable, and then simply run the task. So we want to know what the probability of having a front wheel drive car is. As you can see, the percentage of cars that are front wheel drive are 52.80%. Therefore, the probability of having a front wheel drive car is 0 0.5280. So I just took the decimal point and moved it two places to the left. So the first answer is 0 0.5280. Great. Let's take a look at the second question. What is the probability that a car is all wheel drive or rear wheel drive? So we're still only looking at one variable in this question, so we can continue to use the one-way frequencies task. So we'll go back to our answers, and we'll look at all-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive. So the percentage of cars that are all-wheel drive are 21.50, and the percentage of cars that are rear-wheel drive are 25.70. If we add those together, we get 0 0.4720 probability. So the answer to the second question is 0 0.4720. Great. Let's tackle question number three. What is the probability that a car is a sports car and is from Europe? So here we're using the multiplication rule because we have the word and in our question. So we want to know what is the probability that a car is a sports car and is from Europe? So now we're looking at two variables instead of just one. So we can no longer use the one-way frequencies task because we're analyzing two variables. And the one-way frequencies task is only good when you're analyzing one variable for probability questions. So now we have to use the table analysis task. So I'll get my taskbar back. And under statistics, I'll select table analysis and expand my workspace. I already have the sashelp.cars dataset selected. And now I will select each variable in the setup screen. Now it doesn't matter which one you put in the row variables and which one you put in the column variables. So I will just pick one for each. So here in the row variables, I want my type of car. So this is SUV, sports car, etc. And in my column variables, I'll add origin. So this is the country that the car is from. I'll then go to the options tab and I suggest selecting under percentages, cell, row, and column. Okay, so going back to data, I'll run the task, and I have my contingency table. So going back to the question, I wanna know the probability that a car is a sports car and is from Europe. So the first thing I wanna do is look at the intersection between those two variables. So a car being a sports car is this row here, and a car being from Europe is this column here. So I want to look at the intersection of sports car and Europe, which is right here. Now you'll notice that in the contingency table there are four readings per cell. So to identify what those readings mean, take a look at the legend in the upper left-hand corner of the table. The first row is the frequency, the second row is the overall percent, the third row is the percent of that particular row, and the fourth row is the percent for that particular column. So those will help us answer particular questions depending on what the question is that's being asked. So again, 
If we took a look at the intersection of Europe and sports car, you'll notice there are 23 cars that meet that criteria. They're both a sports car and they're from Europe. Now, if we did the math ourselves, which we could very easily do, we would take 23 and divide it by 428, which is the total number of cars. And that would give us about 0 0.0537. But if you look in the contingency table cell, you'll notice the second value here is 0 0.537. So that's the overall percentage of cars that meet both conditions, that fits from Europe and their sports car. So without doing math, I can just look right here at the percent. Now, if we want to convert the percent to probability, we move the decimal point two places to the left, and we get the answer 0 0.0537. Great, let's take a look at the next question. Now, the next question looks really similar, but you notice I'm asking the probability that a car is a sports car or is from Europe. So therefore, it only has to meet one of those criteria. Now, you'll notice I'm using the general addition rule because you're also going to have cars that meet both of those criteria. In fact, we just found out that probability above. So we don't want to double count those. And if you remember the general addition rule, takes the probability of the first event plus the probability of the second event minus the probability of the compound events. So if we go back to the results in our table analysis, we can see the probability that a car is from Europe is all the way down here in the margins, and you'll see the marginal percentage is 28.74. And we'll notice the probability that a car being a sports car in the margins is 11.45. Now the problem is, is if you just add these two together, the 11.45 and the 28.74, you're going to be counting that intersection of sports and Europe twice. So we need to subtract that 5.37 that we just found. So if you take 0.1145 plus 0.2874 minus 0 0.0537, you'll get a probability of 0.3479. Great, we're moving right along. Number five, what is the probability that a car is from the USA given that it is an SUV? Now the given that keyword tells me that I'm looking at a conditional probability question. So no longer is the denominator in this problem all cars. The denominator in this problem is the the car must be an SUV. So we're only interested in cars that are from the USA out of all the cars that are SUVs and no other cars. So if we go back to our table analysis, here are all the cars that are, in the, that are from the USA. Here are all the cars that are an SUV. So first of all, let's take a look at what the denominator will be. Remember, we're not looking at a total of 428 anymore. We're only interested in cars that are SUVs. In this case, there are only 60 cars that are SUVs. So we're only interested in those cars so far. So now that we know that the denominator is 60, we can find the numerator. And the numerator are cars that meet both requirements, those from the USA and those that are SUVs. And we already know that's 25. So if we take 25 and divide it by 60, we will get 0.4167. Now, where else can you see that value? If you notice in this particular cell, we have 41.67 as our row percent. So if we're looking across the row like we are here, where the denominator is 60, we can easily take a look at the row percent and that will give us our answer. Or we can simply do the math by taking 25 and dividing it by 60, whichever is easier for you. So the answer here would be 0.4167. Now the last question, I just flipped it around on you. I'm asking you, what is the probability that a car is an SUV given that it is from the USA? So that means the denominator is no longer just SUVs. Our denominator is now just cars from the USA. So it's a different denominator. So we're interested in cars that are an SUV from the USA out of all cars that are from the USA. So if we look here, now our denominator are all cars from USA, which is 147. And if we take a look at the cars 
that are SUVs from that, that's 25 out of 147. And if we do that math, that gives you about 0 0.1701. And where do you see that? Again, in the same cell, but now it's the column percent because I'm looking at the column as my denominator instead of the row as my denominator. So you just have to get good at knowing which value to look at. And if you're in doubt at all, just simply do the math. It's very quick math. 25 out of 147 is 0 0.1701. All right, so those are all of our answers. Now, we've just gone over the basics, and you should do a lot of practice with these. So your instructor will be giving you further questions to attempt using both table analysis and the one-way frequency tests. Thanks for watching.